Welcome to the Spark Podcast presented by Flame Consulting. I'm your host, Julie Stokes. Today, we are recording a special episode to introduce you to Unite. Unite is a sisterhood of support for women who have had or are currently battling any type of cancer. They offer unique year-round programs that are alternatives to traditional cancer survivor support groups. The method behind their programs is to bring women together to experience empowering activities that allow them to see themselves differently. The bond that is created along the way not only allows for fun and life-changing experiences, but results in a lifelong friendships that endure well past the program experience. This is an amazing organization that's near and dear to my heart, and I'm so proud to serve on their New Orleans Advisory Board. And today we have two guests with us from Unite. To tell us more, we have Director of Community Relationships, Ruth Avila, and Founder and Executive Producer, Lisa McKenzie. Welcome, Ruth and Lisa. Hi. Thank you. Hi. Thank Hi, you, guys. Tell me a little bit about the history of Unite and how you got involved. So the early days in 2012, or let's say end of 2011, I had a couple friends who were diagnosed with cancer and I saw how their world totally changed. They were very confident, outgoing individuals. And then, you know, they just dealt with so much afterwards in terms of insecurities and depression and body changes and, you know, ongoing therapies that they had to be on. So that was part of the motivation, but also my mom is a cancer survivor. And when I was younger, I watched her go through cancer. And I remember being on a business trip and she flew out and I hadn't seen her for a while and she flew out and she had no hair and um, she was missing a breast. And I didn't realize until recently how much that really impacted me, um, being the daughter of somebody who was going through that and seeing the physical change, um, it's hard, you know? So um, that was sort of the or or origins of it is that I thought, you know, because of a dark place that I had been to is what if, what if I created an event where ladies got to work together to do something fun, um, similar to, I said, you know, like if you all decided, let's go climb Mount Kilimanjaro together. It's a goal that we could work on. It's gonna be fun. It's a distraction from our problems. But in this case, it was, why don't we all train to walk the runway where we go through and we have a real coach who teaches us empowerment skills and none of us really want to go on and become runway models. But in the process of it, we, you know, have fun, we giggle, we learn to pose and look at the camera and uh, just learn to love ourselves again, not be afraid of being, on, you know, on display. So that was the origins. And um, when we did the first event in 2012 in St. Tammany or 2013 in St. Tammany, I had no idea how well received it would be by the participants, but particularly by the medical community. We had so many doctors who came that first year and they were sitting in the audience and they said, oh my gosh, like, that's my patient. And the last time I saw my patient, she was you know, getting chemotherapy and looking depressed and we're, you know, we're all wearing scrubs. So this entire community could come out with friends and family and be in a different place regarding cancer. So that was the start of Unite and it's grown ever since. Love that. What about you, Ruth? Um, I was introduced to Unite in 2015. Um, in 2015, Lisa decided to bring the program to the South Shore. And I was a patient of Oshner. And that first year, she partnered with Oshner, and every patient in the show or in the program was an Oshner patient. And um, I'm a lot of friends with a lot of the nurses there, and um, they convinced me to do it. I honestly had no interest in participating in the program. <laughs> Lisa can tell you, I dropped out in the beginning, like the very first night. I was like, I, I don't have time for this. And um, and when I walked the runway, I don't know how, it was several months later, six months later or something, we practiced in the hallways of Oshner, um, learning our walks. I really got off that stage and said, you know, wow, you sometimes don't even know what you need until you get it. And I really felt um, like I had done something for myself, whereas I wouldn't have done it before. And um, I needed it. And that really motivated me to get involved and to help other people because I thought if it if it only takes a little bit of encouragement and, you know, just getting your hands in there and getting dirty with other people and they can experience what I did, 
which I really felt like I, I woke up to a lot of things that I wasn't awake to before and it's enriched and fulfilled my life and I want to give back and, and do it as well. So I, um, I kind of sat by the first year and watched and then Lisa was in a little bit of trouble and said, we need help in New Orleans or we're not going to have a 2017 show. And um, uh, myself and a few other people from our class of 2015 um, decided, you know, that we, we weren't going to let that happen. And we band together and, and formed the board and um, really started moving and shaking on the South Shore. I just wanted to add to that. One of the problems of our growth was that we were accepting women into our program without funding. Uh, hospitals were sending ladies our way and we were like, you're in the class of whatever, 2016, that 17. And then we'd go find funding. And we put on a big program, as you know, for anybody who's ever seen it. Um, it's way more than the runway show. It's the nine months preceding it with all the training, the photography, the music videos that we film, like everything we put into it. And so that's why we had that meeting with the New Orleans group. We said, if we're going to stick around, we need to get, we need to grow our support. And that's when the advisory board came into being. Ruth said, you probably need to start an advisory board and really start having the outreach to the community and also developing the hospital relationship so they could really truly understand the value of what happens when they have somebody who's under emotional distress as a patient and how they can easily send them our way and we take it from there. Yeah, you know that um, I made my announcement um, that I had breast cancer and withdrew from the state treasurer's race in, uh, I think it was July 6th of 2017. And the 2017 event was very, very shortly thereafter. And it was the very first event that I ever went to related to cancer. And as a patient, and I hadn't even had my first chemo yet. And um, the first thing I want to say is how gorgeous of an event this was. I mean, it was one of the most attractive events I've ever been to. I mean, it was just done so well with all these beautiful white leather sofas, <laughs> all these lights. Everything was done so well. It was amazing. Thank and you. Then, yeah, and I, I stayed like kind of plugged in. And then I was asked to uh, speak in 2019 at the North Shore event. And uh I don't know. So it just kept growing into a, a little bit more involvement steadily and uh, ended up on the advisory board in 2020, right before COVID. I think right before COVID, if I had to guess. Um, it was right, right before. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. 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 We had our um, first meet and greet. Literally, it was like three days before everything got completely shut down. And I remember talking to Lisa in front of Chip Forstall's office and going, what are we going to do? Like, yeah. we, we, what are we going to do? And I'm like, Lisa, we, we cannot not help these women. These women are referred to us because they really need the help. The people that are intimate yeah. and aware of our program understand what we do. And right now, especially right now, we can't turn our back on them. I'm like, let's have Zoom meetings. Yeah. We'll just have Zoom meetings every week. I'll get a sponsor on every week and have them talk to the ladies and we'll yeah. just go from there. And it's amazing how one thing led to another, which led to Lisa having time to think through our pivot. And here we are yeah. still surviving in 2020. I, I just That's amazing. Say, yeah, one of my favorite parts about Unite, I have so many, but one of them is the fact that we have blind applications. Um, so when somebody finds out about our program, and we have many programs, but the one that I'm referring to right now is the runway program that we're all talking about, that if a doctor says or a friend says, I really think you could use this, if a woman is just like feeling alone or depressed or kind of lost her way because of cancer, um, they go to our site, our website, and sign up on this application for the runway program. But we don't ask for any in information except what are they going through emotionally um, and what's your name, your phone number, and your um, email address. So when we meet them, we have no idea who's going to be in each class. And it's so fun because we, I, you know, I mean, it's, it's really interesting to have just such a mix of the community to get, you know, somebody who might be 22 years old to our oldest who's been 83, to every size, shape, ethnicity, socioeconomic background. So um, the, it's a melting pot. And what you find is that um, by bringing women together under these really unique creative situations where you say, okay, today you're going to dress up like Prince characters and get hair and makeup and film a music video, all of their, like they come in kind of with walls built up and then slowly but surely because they are all having this shared experience, they become lifelong friends. So it's, I love that part of the program that we could bring people together who might not ordinarily be friends in real life.
and then they become lifelong friends. Yeah, yeah. And when you go to the events, it's like there is literally every age, every size and shape, and everybody rocks it. So y'all do really do an amazing job with that to give those women the confidence to do what they're doing up there. Very cool stuff. So along those lines, what, what what I know that there's a lot of programs. And once I really got involved more with Unite, I learned about all these different programs that I really didn't understand were even happening in the background. Could you tell me a little bit more about that? Yeah, well, what happened was the first year we were truly just an event. Uh, we wanted to be a fundraiser for Mary Bird Perkins Cancer Center. And it was going to be a one and done thing. The ladies would get training, we raise some money, and we'd go on with our lives. But what happened was that there was a letdown experience the day after the event because the ladies grew so close with each other that we realized, wow, that like their emotional healing doesn't end at the runway stage. It is something that is necessary for years sometimes afterwards, especially when ladies have reoccurrences, which happens many times in our organization. Um, so we, uh, we realized, wow, we are not an event, we're a program, and we need to come up with year-round connectivity for these ladies so that they can get together you know, all throughout the year to support each other and get emotionally fed. So um, as our program developed, we introduced retreats. We have a three-day retreat that the ladies go to every year, including a leadership retreat of a lot of ladies who graduate from the program go on to serve in leadership capacities. We have over 50 graduates from both sides of the lake, the New Orleans and St. Tammany class who now serve in volunteer leadership positions. Ruth is one of those. So we have leadership training. We have a scar art painting program where ladies uh, take photos of their scars, put those on canvas and paint them into these beautiful abstracts works of art so that they can share their story through art and have a power through acceptance of their scars. And then we also have a narrative therapy course, which was introduced this year, where we um, help ladies articulate their unique power stories way beyond what their cancer experience is. Because we said, you know, when three years, three generations from now, when your great grandchildren read about you or say, that was my great, great grandma. We don't want them to say, that's my great, great grandma. She had ovarian cancer. We want them to say, she jumped out of an airplane. She raised alpaca. She had a, a she was a chef at a restaurant, you know, a great mom, mother. Like, so that's what we brought out into this narrative therapy course. And what's cool is that that was the, one of the major pivots we had this year was these ladies participated in this storytelling app so that we could share their stories during this three-day broadcast. We've never been able to do that with our live shows. It's amazing. Um, that's so really cool. We're really going to get to know everyone personally. Yes, you know who you're cheering for now. Yes. Um, you saw us walk three times before. You saw our pictures up there. You might, you know, but you, you didn't know the stories. And um, this is going to be amazing. This yeah, year. you didn't know that Ruth was like so big as an oncology nurse or that um, you, if you had been in the program, and I know we tried to get you in it, you know, everything <laughs> you've done to advance cancer, you know, care and programs for ladies. So that's the backgrounds that we're getting to share with the world. And these ladies, you could sense their empowerment come out of that experience. We also have the, um, Sisters of Amazing Resiliency SOAR Facebook community. Oh, yes. Page. Yes. We have monthly groups. pillar groups. There's so much stuff I could keep going on and on. Yes. Um, we have yeah. groups for all sorts of cancers, metastatic, uh, the implants, um, the, uh, the pos uh, uh, triple negative group. I mean, everybody who has their own. We have a group for the family members because family members are near and dear to our heart. You watch these kids who come to the show and see their moms on stage or a husband and the husband's boo-hooing and you go, wow. I mean, this is really has wide reaching impact as far as what cancer can do to a family and we can help restore that. Oh, it's so hard. I mean, I, you know, when I look back, I mean, I had such an extraordinary story with what I was in the process of doing when I found this out. And um, it's so hard on you mentally. Um, relationships, it's hard because it's hard for anybody, even the people closest to you, to understand how deep the hole you find yourself in some days can get. Um, so... I really can speak to that mental health part of it and say kudos for recognizing that and stepping up to fill that role because to my knowledge there's no other organization that's specifically kind of formed around filling that role that that I've been exposed to anyway and uh 
you know, one of the reasons that I really, really did think about doing it, but I was busy starting my own women's group and stuff, and I probably couldn't have done it, although I don't even know what it looked like with COVID going on. Mm. Yeah. But um, a lot of zoom, zoom, zoom. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe yeah. I could have done it, but um, <laughs> but I mean, I can tell you that I really did think about doing it because it, it's just like to have friends that go through it and to have people around you that are going through the same struggle because it is a struggle and it is hard and everybody in your life doesn't always understand in the way you need them to understand. They can be love and support, but having that sister there that you can go through it with together, I think would be extremely valuable. So kudos on that. Uh, on that subject too. I mean, of course, everybody comes in from a different uh, experience. Uh, we ask on the intake, what is your emotional um, status? Like from a one being bad to five, a lot of ladies enter at one. And then by the time they finish our nine month journey, they're at fives. But throughout the process, as you start learning about these ladies' background stories, I mean, some of them, their husbands have left them because of cancer. Uh, they will have body dysmorphia where a husband will look at their body and, and not be attracted anymore to them because of surgery, scars, missing body parts. Um, you have, you know, so there, there's all kinds of emotional issues that you're dealing with. And then, of course, like I mentioned earlier, the recurrence when somebody has something bad or a bump or a bruise that they're scared about and, and any kind of anything is it terrifies them when they have to go see the doctor because of something they're afraid that might be a recurrence so to have built that network of support of ladies who get it like you said because a lot of times family members are like are you over this yet are you are you cured are you healed like let's get on with our lives and yeah. so for cancer survivors it's not that easy <laughs> to show you how quick people forget, uh, you know, after after the surgery and with no hair, I had to go back to session in 2018, I guess that was. And I walked back into the Capitol and I, I'm still wearing my wig at that point. And about, I don't know, a couple of months in, I take the wig off. And you know what people ask me? Why did you cut all your hair off? <laughs> Are you kidding me? So that's how, you know, people's memories are really short. And it's like, no, I didn't cut my hair off. People right. thought I went all social justice warrior or something. Yeah, <laughs> like, cut my hair off. G.I. Jane. <laughs> you yeah. know, part of the problem in the community right now. It's just that, you know, that as a patient, it is a lonely thing because you feel like you wear out your people. You're like, okay, I, I should not be so distressed i should be getting over this i'm just it's almost like a little bit of shame like a little veil of shame like why am i not where everybody thinks i should be because that's how the community acts right well yeah. and for me you know having my first round of chemo which was 12 weeks long tax all i guess tax all for me was very easy um by the end of it i mean and i was going through a lot of stuff so i mean it wasn't very very is probably the wrong um adjective to put with it but i kept such a brave face and such a positive attitude through it all because i just felt called to do that but people didn't really think i was going through something too you, you know what i mean so sometimes putting on a brave face is can hurt from people even understanding that you really are going through something and um, well, that was nothing that a good round of four treatments of the red devil couldn't fix because <laughs> I was certainly aware that I was going through something quite traumatic at that point. Oh, but, red devil will get you. Oh, it was awful. And the, the emotional place that it can leave you, I can't say enough that the physical part is rough, but the emotional part for me was 10 times as hard as the physical. And I just never really knew that that was coming but when you're on that drug i mean there are days when you could have two or three days easily in a row where all you want to do is stare and it doesn't even really matter what you stare at because you're not capable of doing much more than that and it affects everybody different but um i can't say enough how once i really understood what unite was about because when i went to that first thing in 2017 you know it being my first experience with something like that and I still had, you know, everything. I mean, I, I hadn't suffered anything except for the disappointment of having to drop out of that race yet. Hmm. And uh, I didn't get it. I didn't get it. And then once I went through the emotional part and then learned that that's what you guys were doing there. And uh, that really, really brought home how important it was and how much I did value it. So um I know, you know, I, on the mental health front, is there anything else that, you know, you'd like to say about the mental health aspect of Unite's programs? Um, I think that it's important to understand that the cancer community 
recognizes that this is a need. That the reason we're connecting with them and they're joining up with us and using them as an extension of their services is because they understand that this is an area where they need to really figure out a way to address. Um, in 2006 is when they really first started talking about survivorship, which is the buzzword in cancer care. In 2014, the American Society of Clinical Oncology published its first survivorship um, guidelines. And then, um, you know, now in 2019, we're updating all these guidelines. So there has to be a way to address the, the body image concerns, the, de yeah. the depression, the anxiety, the, the menopausal symptoms, taking the, you know, okay, you get your chemo, and then you put you in a hormone and everybody thinks you're done. Well, you put on that hormone blocker and all of a sudden a woman who had, you know, estrogen her whole entire life, doesn't. <laughs> what does that do to you? You know, and, and nobody understands that. So, um, you know, this has been embraced by the cancer community because even though they've been working so hard to put into place cancer survivorship programs, they're mainly built around referrals, a referral to a social worker for some psychosocial care because there's lipidema and we need a pump and things like that. Um, a referral to a, a psychiatrist because there's depression. All those things are different encounters, um, copay issues, can someone afford it? There's just you know so many barriers. And this program is just an easy way for a doc to see someone who's, you know, she's not on a level playing field with everyone else. She's got multiple issues. She's a single mom, you know, all these other things. I wanna refer her to Unite because she'll automatically be, be stuck in, in a, a place where she's gonna land and be supported. And she, they will give her a framework to really get through the, what's coming after cancer is done, after the treatment's done. So um, I, I really have to say thank you to the cancer community for recognizing our, you know, what we do for mental health and for women and, um, and embracing us and supporting us. I know, can you yeah. imagine, oh, I was gonna say, can you imagine the burden on the doctor when a patient comes in during a very busy day of meetings with patients and then somebody saying, here's what's going on emotionally. I mean, doctor wouldn't have time to sit down in a normal visit to even address that. I mean, maybe surface, but I think that many doctors will tell us that it's such a relief to be able to say, call them, you know, and then they know that we are partnering with them in that effort and that the ladies will be in great hands. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I yeah. That reminded me of one day that I show up at Oshner. It was like my fourth red devil. And um, it hit me so hard and it was flu season. So everybody in the house is getting sick and exposing me to the flu and coughs and everything. And I ended up sick. It was like three days after, four days after the treatment and I had 102 fever and I couldn't even process what was happening. I mean, honestly. And uh, I remember dragging myself and it took me like two hours to get myself yeah. in the car yeah that must have been hard and I shouldn't have done it and I wasn't yeah. sane enough not to do it I got in the car and I drove myself to Oshner instead of crying out for help to anybody because I was just in a mental space where it was like you know so I, I showed up and um my um I guess she's a nurse practitioner Jill over there Jill um Jill saved the day <laughs> but it, but it wasn't pretty, and so to have that to lean back on, um, and and you're right, Ruth. I mean, what happens after? It, you know, I think that you're so busy thinking I beat cancer, and everybody's so busy saying you beat cancer that you tend to brush off everything that's going on with you, and it's not easy stuff. Yeah, no. no, I mean, it, it's why so many women like myself included were just like, I'm like, I'm back working. I'm not under actor. You know, I don't need to do this. And, um, and we're so mistaken because, um, you know, we, we do have issues and, um, it's so hard for us to ask help. When I, when I was sick, that was the hardest thing for me to do. Every single time I had to ask for help, can you pick up my kid from school or whatever? I just cried. It, it was just terrifying to me that I couldn't do what I needed to do for me. Yeah. And, um, and then afterwards, when it's over, you get the feel like, is it going to happen again? It, you know, it's, it's, we, there are issues. And, yeah. and to have the sisterhood um, of support is really an amazing thing. I just want to address the sisterhood real fast about what that looks like. Um, a lot of what, I, I come from a sorority background and had a very rich experience back at San Diego State with the Delta Gammas. And uh, so a lot of how we structure this is that each 
group in St. Tammany, New Orleans, a group of 25 ladies each, and they train as a group. And so they enter like the class of 2017, 18, 19. But it really is a pay it forward program because after the ladies get such a valuable experience, they then either want to serve as a leader or as a big sister for the next uh, class and really like love on them. And so that's why we call it a sisterhood. And there's been 500 women who've been gifted this runway empowerment program that has thousands of dollars worth of items and services that we give to each lady who joins the program. Yeah, I love that. So what about the programs? Like I know that um, you just did a big taping, I think, on September 20th. <laughs> and that there's a big broadcast coming up on November 6th through 8th, I think. Tell us all about that. Well, what happened was that we had our two live events, which we usually have a thousand people in person at these events. Have you seen like, you know, standing room only? Um, so those were scheduled for July and October this year. And then when COVID hit, uh, we had already launched both groups, the St. Tammany and New Orleans group. They had met a couple times and were developing these friendships, yeah. super excited about the theme this year, Purple Rain, Let Love Rain, a royal celebration with gowns and crowns. I mean, we had it all figured out and then boom, we were dead in the water on the program. And so, um, you know, the ladies, you could tell they were, everybody was stuck in their homes in quarantine and having a major letdown. I mean, we were coming around and doing these Zoom meetings, but privately with our team, we're like, what are we going to do? And we kept actually thinking we were going to do a live event. We would call a venue and then COVID would be extended. I mean, the quarantine kept going and going. And we did actually think about just canning it for the year. And, um, but we had such a commitment. We were already developing these friendships with these ladies that it was an aha moment in the middle of the night one night where, you know, I just thought, what if we can create that exact feeling when you step on stage but not necessarily have your friends and family there, but we could create that excitement. And that's why we chose Jefferson Performing Arts Center because I wanted, you know, like, I, I don't know why I picture Lady Gaga, like being a performer on the stage, what it must feel like <laughs> to step on stage and have all those seats and, and you just feel like such a star. And, and that is the feeling when you step on a stage like that. And so we said, well, you know, we'll just do a, we'll film them because we knew that the government at that time was allowing 50 people in a building. So we said, okay, with our film crew and our, and our hair and stylists and our team, we could at least film them and then bring the event to everybody. And then at the very last second, literally six days before the filming date, which was September 20th, the governor announced phase three and we were allowed to have 250 people. So each model was able to have two friends and family. It wasn't quite the same, but now November 6th through 8th, when we put all the magic together with the editing that we're doing, they'll be with all their friends and family at watch parties in their living rooms or, you know, celebrating across the country simultaneously. And we have a chat feature on the side. So like if you're watching on television or on your computer, on your phone, uh, you could write in and say, good job. And, um, you know, there's going to be an auction. There's going to be door prizes that we give away. There's local entertainers. We have several local entertainers who will who were sidelined and decided to perform specifically for us and those are being shown. The musician community has risen to the occasion. Yeah. I mean really have come out in droves to support us. Yeah there's a one oh, like thing that I really want the audience to know that um, on the November 6th broadcast and the 8th that we have 15 local musicians who went to a recording studio, Groovia 7, Rock and Doopsy, Top Cats. We have um, Faith Beck Faith Beck now. Now, who is American mm -hmm. Idol finalist. Like all these people yeah. came and recorded Purple Rain, original music and their own song. And it is mind blowing. Like so I would, beautiful. I would so download beautiful. it and buy it for my uh, <laughs> playlist. It's amazing. So that's, we're treating the audience to this amazing performance. Yeah. That's so cool. So how can people that might be listening that have never heard of or been involved with Unite, how could they, you know, get access to this and take part in it? Is there a way? Yeah, if everybody goes to our main website, it is so of course we spell our name differently just to confuse everybody. <laughs> Unite, Y O U, like me and you, U N I G H T, UniteEvents.com. And there are links that direct people to purchasing tickets on that site, as well as there's a way to contact us and fill out a form if people are interested in more information. And, and that 
third week of November, we're opening up applications for anybody who wants to sign up for the 2021 program to be part of the sisterhood or anytime year round, uh, just join us. Come like Ruth said to the pillar group meetings that we have, which are more like a regular support group. We have our retreat plan. We haven't picked the dates yet for 2021, but there's so many neat things that we do. And if the world opens up more, we, we get together at local restaurants and things like that. And I do awesome. want and to there's say, also, we, oh, sorry. I was just going to add that we have people that join us that don't do the runway empowerment yeah. program. I just want like, I feel like we've talked so much about it. Like we do have women that come and just do all of these periphery programs and decide never to do that. And they still really get a lot out of it. Yeah. They just volunteer. They say, I don't really want to be on that stage, but I want to be behind the scenes in the dressing room or something. Um, nine times out of 10, by the, by the time they see what we're about, they'll, we'll talk them into being on the stage. The stage, I got to walk this time. I did this show opening, which I've never done in the 14 shows that we've put on. Just for fun, at the very last minute, Kenny Lopez, who's with WGNO, you know, he's one of our MCs. Uh, the curtains went up and I was on the stage. <laughs> I'm telling you that it's a feeling you cannot forget. Ruth, I, like, you I, I don't know. <laughs> but can you not, you cannot forget that feeling of just like going for it, you know, like 10 seconds before walking out, like, I don't think I should be doing this. And then you just mm -hmm. commit to it. And then it's a feeling you're like, wow, I will do that a thousand times now if I could. <laughs> I'll never forget watching Lucia, my kids see me like it, yeah. they were coming out of their skin and it was just That's so cool. like beautiful to see. Yep. Oh, I love that. I wanted to mention too, that um, when you go to the Unite website that you can probably access um, the We Lift You Up to make a donation because while Unite, um, you know, comes together in, in what looks like a commercial way, that there is an underlying charity that benefits all of this. And I mean, like I said, this show is absolutely grand and it does take charitable dollars um to put this on so is there a button on that website that they can use to make a donation yep it says donate and you could donate any amount and like you said th those funds support the year-round efforts that we do and we just really use our time our time our talent our skills to put together just such a fun program people who donate find immediate gratification because they see how their money is being used like the ladies each year are the product of what we do and you and so to see these ladies smiling and there's a, a page that has all the ladies we've supported if the sisterhood pages they could go and look at, and there's videos and news stories there's all kinds of stuff on that website yeah and like you said and you, you can, can see the stories of the women yes yep right yeah right. so i love that and you can buy tickets Ruth? to the broadcast and the post party don't forget the post party <laughs> yes <laughs> tickets for sale for that as well so we have the broadcast november 6th seventh weekend and then the post party for New Orleans is November 15th and for St. Tammany it's November 14th right Lisa that's right and that the reason that we're doing that is that we have the clearance from the government to bring people together to have more of a celebration for these ladies they did not get to have that they got to be on the stage but now we want to introduce them in the grand style that we always do and mm -hmm. let them really hear real applause. And uh, so that's what that night's about is for, it, and it, it really doesn't, it's not just open to friends and family, it's anybody who just wants to be inspired and, and put on something beside yoga pants, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, yeah. yoga pants are pretty good. <laughs> they have served their purpose for a long time, but it's time to get dressed up again and get out. <laughs> Amen. Yes. I hear that. <laughs> so it has been such a pleasure to talk to you both today. Uh, unfortunately, that is about all the time we have for today, but I would just like to thank you both, uh, Ruth Avila and Lisa thank McKenzie. Thank and you for, for all more, you do. Oh, I'm so excited about this and just love you guys. Um, for more information on Unite, you can visit younighteventscom um, and don't forget to like Unite on all your social media yes. platforms and keep up with this great organization and um, go buy a ticket to the event. Um, Join go us. Make, a don make a donation to their charitable organization. You get tax deduction. And um, finally, please share this video cast on your page if you found it interesting or if you know other people that would be interested in Unite. Um, I'm your host, Julie Stokes, and we'll see you next time.